this show today is about trying to destroy the global warming mythology and the way I'm going to do that is, is that I'm going to focus on the things that the uh, hysterical global warming uh, people uh, the, the things they like the most, the things they are the most sure about to, to make it, I want it to be as uh, humiliating as it possibly can be so uh, therefore I'm going to talk about what they what they are the most sure about what they think the most about global warming uh, so uh, I will I will destroy this uh, subject. I, I will destroy this global warming thing uh, by talking about pol polar bears. So what about pol polar bears? What do you think about uh, global warming when you think about polar bears? Yeah, you think about that they are they are they can't live the polar bears because they are falling into the water. They have no nowhere to be. They they because the ice is melting and they have so much problems so so this is this is the view um, and it's it's so sad about these polar bears uh, uh, and people are also afraid of scary sharks uh, another thing is uh, typical is the ice melting and the water level rise and the other one is that C CO2 is so bad okay so let's get into this uh, okay first we'll look at the polar bear population and the polar bear population has increased since uh, and, and they have looked in this study and they have followed it for a long long time here since 1975 here somewhere and oh, oh, oh it goes up the polar bear population goes up oh but 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 that, that doesn't fit to my my view of things I thought the polar bears are, 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 are having so much problems uh, so so this is this can't be right this can't be right but okay so this is a study and it's it has uh, yeah it, it, it has simply kept kept track of the polar bear population so that's the first the first thing that oh, oh it's starting to hurt it hurts my global warming heart uh, okay so let's continue um oh what is this it's record low temperature in antarctica oh this is weird but so in 2010 it was the lowest temperature ever in antarctica but i have heard that antarctica is melting what is this this is weird oh oh what's happening Okay, so let's continue. Uh, hockey stick. So we have Al Gore, the president candid uh, candidate in US. So he presented this chart about CO2 uh, exploding. And he used this hockey stick chart. Uh, it's called that. And the thing about this one, <laughs> it's interesting if we search for lawsuit here. Oh my god, uh, I can't do that. But if, we, if you search for lawsuit in this article, uh, keyboard is, by, is away. Uh, so you will, you will not find anything, but if you search in... Oh, I wonder why you can't search for, for lawsuit. But if you, if you look in this article instead, you will see that that there actually is a lawsuit and that the person that made the hockey stick chart he was actually wrong oh 
uh, well, this is how it is. Uh, uh, research. No, 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 no. It's 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 a law lawsuit. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, here is the lawsuit. Oh no. The, the hockey stick short is under lawsuit. This is not good to my view of global warming. I thought it was true what Al Gore was saying. This is not good. Okay, so calculating place glacier ice volumes and sea level equivalents. So apparently um, the sea level can rise 57 meters all over the world because of Antarctic that can melt and that's that's the biggest one and maybe I mean I I, th I still think that, that there is global warming even though the hockey stick was wrong and uh, uh, polar bears I really thought that they had a problem but but okay, but this can't be wrong, right? So, um, so here we have, they have Antarctica here, and they they had, they have the largest sea level equivalent. So it's best to just look at that. There's no really point to look at anything else at the moment. So because I'm just trying to talk about the best arguments. So that's it. Uh, so here you can see that like I, I have to see what the next I am going to talk about. So here you can see that there is actually ice going out in in uh, outside uh, Antarctica, and the reason for this is yeah it's kind of seasonal. So every every year the ice goes out, uh, it gets colder and it goes out or something like that. And then it goes in again, and it kind of goes in in this pattern all the time, uh, in and out. Yeah. And uh, then uh, what happens then is uh, is uh, is that yeah you, you should know about this ice here. It actually doesn't contribute to sea level rise, and that's because this ice that is outside um, Antarctica, it's actually floating on the water. And when something floats in water, it is actually the case that this ice cube floating in water, if it would melt, it, I'm, I'm claiming that it wouldn't increase the level in the glass if it would melt. And the reason for this is that uh, Archimedes principle. Um, and that means like, um, since the density of ice is lower, uh, it's going to float and uh, the actual volume of it when it's melting is exactly the same as how much it has below sea level below water yeah uh, so um, so this is the same with this ice and as you all know the sea level doesn't increase every year up, up and down in, in like this giant way like as um, Antarctica is claimed to do but I will talk more about this because they have some more like kind of evidence that I will talk about so this is just what I say now is just to understand that there is ice floating okay and this is important because if you ask yourself how much of the ice is floating in Antarctica not outside this is called, I don't remember what it's called, but um, this is called, oh, never mind, we will get into that. 
So let's continue. Uh, so here's a scary article. Oh my god. Uh, West Antarctica is melting and it's our fault. Is it my fault? I think it's my fault. I think I did something. I, s I put something in the trash. And that was bad. Right? Um, and I, I, I'm breathing. That's not good. Okay. So, and there's more article about this, like scientists claim links climate change to melting in West Africa. Okay, so this is serious. Uh, but if you look, West Africa, this is this this is actually an image of how like they they are showing the temperatures change in relation to. To Antarctica and you can see red here oh oh it's warm here and it can melt and that is so scary because you remember Antarctica is a large part of 57 meters oh that is scary so so this is so scary right and it can melt they say so but okay what they don't say is that actually so so this is actually West Antarctica and East Antarctica and it's named like that and what they don't say is that most of the West Antarctic ice sheet is grounded below sea level uh, 1.5 miles below sea level I think that's actually an average. I'm not. I, I don't remember, but there's other sources of this ground ice sheet ground level. So when you look into this, if you research this yourself, you should search for ice sheet ground level. And besides being 1.5 miles below sea level, the thickness of of this ice is um, 2160 meters so what is they are using miles here and then they are using meters maybe they're trying to hide something so if we convert miles to meters it's actually quite low it's 2400 meters below sea below sea level and and that actually means that West Antarctica is floating just like an ice cube. I will repeat, West Antarctica is floating just like an ice cube. And this means that if it's actually going to melt, maybe, maybe that's some kind of cycle that it melts. And if it melts, nothing would happen because it's just like an ice cube uh, that's floating in a glass. It wouldn't affect the sea level. Okay. Oh no! I thought that I uh, I thought it would melt and it was so so bad. It's so bad. No. Okay. No. <sighs> okay. Um. So carbon emissions carbon emissions is so bad right it's so bad no i don't like co2 it's so bad okay <sighs> what's this yeah um hmm. uh, so the important thing here is probably that like as you can see, this is greenhouse gases, and those they are supposed to heat uh, the world. Supposedly, supposedly, it's supposed to heat. Okay, so carbon dioxide, dry dioxide, it's it's so so bad. Oh my god. Okay, but there is actually carbon dioxide in the ocean, and actually. 90% of CO2 is found in the oceans. And you know what? Maybe it's not here. 
No, it's, it's not. But this is interesting. So 93, almost all of the CO2 is in the oceans. And let's talk about CO2 because it's the most important one. The one that they love the most. It's in the oceans. So, okay, never mind, let's continue. And there is deep sea carbon reservoirs. And they are saying that if Earth heats, it could release CO2, right? And here you can see the bubbling. Oh, it's bubbling CO2 from the ground. Okay, but do you know what this means? It means that the, the assumption that CO2 generates global warming, maybe it's not that strong, that it, it's not a good assumption, because, because the only thing they have is they have sharks and they have temperature of Earth, going millions of years back in time and they have CO2 but if there really is like such a concentration of CO2 in oceans and in the ocean floors then and, and these floors actually actually release CO2 when heated maybe it actually is the opposite around opposite way around that not that CO2 creates um, heat, heating, but actually that heating creates CO2, okay? I'll, I will repeat it. Heating creates CO2, not CO2 creates heating. It's vice versa. Get it, okay? It's time to like wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Okay, let's continue. Oh, look at this! Oh! Effect of temperature and light on the growth of algae. Because if you look into the production of oxygen, you will realize that most of the oxygen is created from, um, from algae, algae in the ocean. And I think it's like the majority, okay? And these use, these eat CO2 and the sun, you know, uh, ph photosynthesis, okay? So what actually this is me means is that they are like studying most of the algae, normal ones, and they have found like the op optimal temperature for growth of these is like pretty high temperature, higher than is in the oceans. And what means with this, like if the temperature goes up in, in the oceans, in, in, uh, in the world, there actually is something that limits the CO2 from exploding. Because when the temperature goes up in the oceans, the uh, algae grow and they consume more CO2. Okay? Okay, everything is bullshit. You know? Everything is crap. It's bullshit. <sighs> okay. The, it, it's so disgusting with the um, in intellectual dishonesty. It, there's no like honor, there's no moral, there's no, there's nothing. Yeah, it's disgusting. So, per permafrost, it's here, yeah, okay, and there's some methane here, and if, and meth methane is another here, it's another greenhouse gas, and if it's, if this permafrost is heated, just like the just like uh, the ocean floor, it will release methane, okay? So we have another um, indi 
indicator or uh, implication of uh, warming creating greenhouse gases and not the other way around as as is being claimed okay oh. <clears throat> okay um, okay so what these people don't like that have this uh, polar beer love uh, and uh, yeah I, I have nothing against polar bears it's just so you know um, is that they don't like the fact that the sun is affecting the climate it goes against their agenda the agenda for global taxes on of C CO2 and they are the scientists in this field are in a way selling their soul um, even if they produce science that show the opposite of what media talk about I think they have uh, uh, they, they have uh, they should talk about this because like normal people will not look into this okay so I, I will just tell you like the sun affects the temperature okay and you can see this I'll, I'll tell it it's really really stupid but when it is night it is colder it's colder in the night is it CO2 what is it no it's colder because the sun is not shining on that place um, so we have we have Vic, Vic, Lake Victoria oh but they found something to do with the sun when they have many sunspots Lake Victoria it affects this, the sea level on, oh, but do you mean the sun affects the sea level? Yes, it does. So here we have sunspot number correlated to to Lake Victoria, and when there's a lot of sunspot spots, the sea level rises. Okay, I will. And 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 the thing is, they really don't like this. They really don't like this. So I, I will just explain what's happened. So when there is a lot of sunspots, there is more heating of the oceans, and this uh, will make it rain more here, and the sea level will rise. So this is uh, like kind of the best proof of sunspots heating. Uh, it's one of the best. You can also see correlation between uh, crop size and sunspot okay sunspots activity okay okay I'll just show something lost I from start I'm actually taking what they say seriously but but it's it's um, it's bullshit but I actually made a calculation let's see where it is here uh, so I programmed this okay so I, I look how um, atoms, like infrared light, is uh, going through a layer of CO2 atoms. And I assume that they absorb this, uh, this infrared and is being uh, emitted in different directions and uh, and I run this simulation and I can see that okay so if I run it for starters I can see that for thousand particles and a thick a layer of like hundred thousand co2 particles and oh sorry it's thousand um, infrared uh, light beams coming from ground going upwards and 
first of all, I set the absorption ratio so that the result is uh, one third of the particles going through, and that corresponds to NASA. Nice, NASA, NASA says it's twenty nine percent going through. So I just made this kind of for fun uh, and wasted some time. And if I change this to two, okay, let's see. Okay, and to save. Okay. So now it's the double thickness of CO2, and if I run it, uh, yeah, it takes longer time because it's more particles to react to, and about half of the uh, half of the radiation compared to the normal layer goes through. So this is um, expected. Uh, there is nothing scary about, like there is no exponential behavior in making the CO2 layer thickness thicker. If it actually be became thicker, there is no exponential behavior to it. Okay. Okay. So this is done. So this is my take on. On this and and every one of these scary shards every else ice melting water level rise co2 is so bad I mean co2 is the food of the plants so it will grow more when it's more of that like everything is bullshit that's it so um, so I hope I made you uncomfortable and uh, like yeah about this because it's uh, it's so 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 bad this okay so I will not talk about this again because it it's waste a waste of time actually so bye bye.